Hey guys, we're back with the best of five between Top Ramen and Taco Cake. Let's see what happens on Fata Morgana. Taco Cake in the top left, Top Ramen in the top right. This is one of the shorter maps. Uh, oh, by the way, it's a map by Veek7, if you somehow didn't know that. Uh, and Taco Cake and Top Ramen have been playing some pretty ballsy openers. Uh, I mean, Top Ramen has been macro-oriented so far, where he's gone for the stockade into quarry. But he's not harvesting Vespin this time around, so I have a suspicion he's going to be maybe doing the, the double stockade opener for a little bit more pace. And this is a good map for it, because this map uh, does have that uh, shorter rush distance in general. Uh, so you can get a little bit more pace, a little bit more tempo. Stockade coming. And at this point, I mean, maybe not anymore, but uh, Top Ramen could theoretically have uh, switched off a lot of his workers to gas if he still wanted the quarry, but electing to not do that just yet. We have a pretty fast worker scout over here for our boy Taco. As he aims to take a ramp hatch. And this makes sense, right? You want to uh, try to block this off if you can. At least uh, take advantage of the little cliff stuff. And, and much like uh, Axiom, you can't super effect change down here from up here uh, using the basic static defenses. Uh, maybe if you've got some Bactylisks or something later on in the game, you can, but... And it is indeed a double stockade, so this will get scouted. Taco Cake scouting very fast. So far, Top Ramen has, uh, again, gone for the stockade, quarry, uh, treasury, quarry, <laughs> second stockade, vestry uh, approach. Uh, maybe the, I think that maybe the second stockade comes a little bit earlier than the treasury or something, but that's been his, his uh, MO so far uh, for the first two matches of this best of five, which is just a show match. It's not for any reason. We're just casting it because we want to, and they played it because they wanted to, so that's, uh, that's good. If you guys want to, experience Cosmonarchy. That's a good thing. So, uh, yeah, good place to do it. Pool coming for our boy Taco. And an anchor has been started. I'm trying to look around for where it's been started. Oh, it's behind the mineral line. That's a curious place for it. I don't know if Taco's noticed. <laughs> this could be a very fast game, boys. We could be on to game number three very soon. Not a crazy amount of investment here, but the fact that Taco Cake didn't notice this and only now has realized, wait a second, you've got an anchor over here. And uh, has to start to think about stopping the Mavericks before they can hit the anchor. Now, one of them is in there. Uh, again, Quasilisks do okay versus the uh, the Mavericks uh, and versus the anchors. So this shouldn't be the end of the world, particularly since you can't retarget. Now, it will retarget to a unit automatically, but um, Taco Cake needs to get on this. He's going to go ahead and focus down the worker. It's going to load into the anchor, which makes sense. Now going to go ahead and dive in over here. This is pretty good. You know, it's uh, going to allow you to... Uh, stop any units from, from leaving. Uh, one more worker might die. No, not going to happen. So he loses one worker, one Quasilis. A lot of mining time. I'd say Top Ramen comes out pretty decidedly ahead on that. He still has no Vespine, so... Not that that means anything per se. Uh, but the military advantage is going to be with Top Ramen here, particularly with this kind of engagement being taken by Taco Cake, where he's not focus firing. Um, another Stim gets forced out, though. Could have just stood... Stu uh, yeah, I, I honestly, I feel like Taco should have just stood there. If he stands his ground in that situation, he uh, probably picks off two of these Mavericks and doesn't lose as many workers. He could counter drill onto this situation, but a little bit of a flubbed control there. Down to eight workers now. Manages to assassinate one of them. Only one Maverick remaining. You've got more streaming on in. But six Quasis are a lot scarier to deal with than uh, the inverse. I'm, I'm not sure about the control so far, but I do think that Taco Cake is going to be okay on the hold. He should be able to extend play here. The stim up the ramp is uh, a little bit out of sync with these other two Mavericks coming on in, and they weren't stimmed anyway, so yeah, we will see, at least for now, a little bit of a hold. Vespine now in the tank here for our boy. I think, I wouldn't be surprised if he, okay, he's going for a Fulcrum. I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for like a drop or something. Uh, just to finish the job, because he knows that Taco Cake is probably... He saw him try to put down a Kagrin earlier and then cancel it. He knows he's probably going to be going for the ramp defense, but, uh, you know, going for the Fulcrum, maybe the Palladium add-on, adding a Vestria now. No quarry, but so far ahead in workers, it doesn't even matter. It's like he had a quarry. It's like he had two quarries, dude. I don't know how you'd have two quarries and only one ministry, but he's got a treasury coming, so... Everything looking pretty good for Top Ramen. Uh, Neb Neblime said that... He thinks that the double stockade opener is like the strongest opener that uh, you can have in uh, Terran for Cosmonarchy. And I feel like he might be right about that, right? But there's there's definitely more play than that. You know, you can still do the Fulcrum opener. 
for vultures. I imagine that will be a little bit more in vogue versus Protoss, but you can make bio work versus Protoss too, which is something you could never really say about StarCraft 1, uh, at least at the high level, right? Maybe uh, it would be fine at the lower level when they don't have their timings down. I like the uh, forward Maverick just to scout to see if an attempt at an expansion was being taken. You don't give your opponent anything for free. In fact, that's exactly what Taco Cake is probably trying to do right now. Oh, he's slinking it out. Maybe just trying to get for a desperate scout, but at this point, you know, every worker is sacred. And this will end up getting caught. Minimap awareness there for Top Ramen. So, he's going to go ahead and force another stim. Uh, just from the one Maverick, so that's wise. One more hit. Hey, he's dead. Uh, now, the problem is he just moved all of his units, so. He could have probably just pinched off like two Mavericks, stimmed them, and then killed that guy that way. Uh, and instead, you may, may have broken the contain. This guy's too far away to even see if anything left the ramp, right? So, uh, Top Ramen now being a little bit more on the curious side, the cautious side. Second quarry, nearly complete. He's got his Palladium, but it's not making anything just yet. And we have a Vornath Pond on the way. Interesting. So the Pond upgrade gives you uh, Nathra cores, which is actually something that Taco Cake has favored in ZBZ sometimes. Um, we did see him put two workers on each gas. He has since corrected it to three on this guy. But the geyser gives you more. Uh, when So to break it down, if you have two workers on the geyser and none on the ridge, then it doesn't matter who where the third worker goes. It'll be the same efficiency. But if you've got two workers on the geyser and one worker on the ridge... Your next worker should be on the geyser. That's just for in terms of efficiency. FYI. So, uh, or no, I guess it was it was more that if you have a two, I guess maybe it doesn't matter thinking about it, because the second worker in the ridge is the same efficiency. So maybe maybe I'm just a goofball, but I would always saturate the geyser first because sometimes you'll have the uh, the geyser be a little bit closer than the ridge or whatever. So I still think it would be better. To saturate. It's safer to saturate the geyser first after you put one worker on the ridge. So it'd be like two geyser, one ridge, three geyser, three ridge. That's how you do it. Now we have a lot of Nathacores on the way, and they will get here and ambush the watchdog before it can be built. So this is a nice little backstab counterattack. We don't really have that much over here, right? I mean, this watchdog isn't going to finish. The Maverick's getting shredded before the clerics can even do anything. He decides to not even attack that. He wants to just use this tempo, this little window of timing here. He sees that there's a Palladium. It is going to start churning out another Phalanx. We saw one be in production earlier. This is very, very bad for the worker count of Top Ramen, but he's still ahead in workers. He's still ahead in workers, guys. And the Cleric's now slowing down the demise of the Masons while the Mavericks try to storm the gates back in. But you can just fly back over. The Watchdog airlifted over here to see if it can provide some coverage. Need to watch out for any potential repairs. A lot of micro being put here for Taco Cake, but he is making more Nathracores behind this, and he is also making more Quasilisks. So he's getting ready to storm out on one base. Has Top Ramen been absolutely foiled? Another Watchdog be deployed. Those two have evacuated from that position, which, you know, you could just go back over here and start massing up. We do have way more Nathracores coming, at least the same number that uh, initially were dispatched. Oh, man, if you fly over the, the Mavericks, though, you start to look a lot worse for wear. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Oh, they will attack, move on to these Mavericks over here. Catch three on the outskirts. You can see how it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a cheeky, like, melee mutilisk in some ways, right? Doesn't end up killing the Hurakan. Gets a very, very bruised and loses one Nathracor. Maybe thinking about stabbing out for a third base. Yeah, I think he wants to take this bottom left. I've, se I've seen him take the seven o'clock base a few times. Oh, the Burrow Trap for the Quasis. He wants to have... Uh, our top ramen boy over here set himself up. Now, if the phalanx is siege, if they deploy... Oh, boy. Hold on. Hold that thought. Gonna talk about them losing armor and having no durability, but talk about the watchdogs having no durability. Now it's starting to be repaired, and I think that's gonna be enough. He'll go ahead and pick off a maverick on the way out, and he will have five. Count him. Five nathracores left over. He is not setting up the 7 o'clock, and the Quasilisks are not going to get the surprise, but are they? Because the Phalanx is deploy anyway. In the face of all of those Quasilisks unburrowing, the Phalanx has no armor when it's in siege mode. You do have to watch out for that. So the artillery gets sniped. The Nathacores come in at the uh, probably the worst time to support, uh, so that's just throwing away all that gas, unfortunately. But, hey, sniping down the artillery, that massively extends the amount of time Taco Cake can stay in. This is a scrappy kind of game. The pushes continue, trying to focus fire these Mavericks before the Clerics can get all their healing off. They are going to be successful initially. Only four Mavericks remaining, so this push is... Really, all the teeth in this push has been defanged, right? Uh, you can say that for sure. Seven o'clock still not on the way, though. Taco Cake slipping on that a little bit. 
has the has had the money this whole time to make that happen. One more worker for good measure, forcing down another Kagrant as well. So Top Ramen getting what he can out of that. I wanted to talk a little bit too that uh, Taco Cake is the top player, the guy who receives top billing in the series here. But I was really tempted to put Top Ramen there. It's just when you're a newcomer, um, you really have to f have to prove yourself, right? You get reduced seating uh, if you're a newcomer. Uh, if I've never, especially if I've never seen any games from you, although I had seen some top ramen games, so I knew he was pretty good. That's why he's seated sixth in the tournament, uh, in the current gauntlet. But the uh, uh, looking at uh, the way Taco Cake is like, he went from fifteenth seed uh, in the first gauntlet to first seed in the second gauntlet because of his performance and uh, going through a murderer's row of opponents and the players who uh, defeated him. Uh, the they were the players who uh, like you know qualified, right? So. Pretty slick in that respect. He only lost in ZVZ, thinking about it. So, Top Ramen has taken a, a... I would say a notorious and noteworthy scalp in that first match on Axiom. And he looked pretty good to dispatch him yet again with his little rush. But his Tier 2 is finished. Anseal's on the way. Captain C's not far behind. Adding a little bit of a ring of Watchdogs. Atlas all the way in the corner. Safest it could possibly be. Taco Cake now setting up 7 o'clock, finally. Has a lot of Nathricores in you know, 16 Nats. You, you add that to the 16 he's already made, he could basically be at Tier 2 right now. Not to say nothing about the mineral uh, loss of that. Worker advantage reclaimed for Top Ramen. I mean, he was pretty much always having the worker advantage. Uh, these three Idle Masons, you might think that that's a bit of a critical thing, like, oh, he shouldn't have three Idle Masons. He should be, uh, you know, mining with those, but... Getting those repairs off could be the difference between the Nathricors storming the gates and destroying the Watchdogs and not, right? Not even focus firing right now, just sort of engaging on the attack move. This is coming at the same time as Top Ramen taking this middle fight and absolutely swamping the Quasilisks with the Phalanxes. Now, of all of that, we've got eight uh, Nathricors left. They come on in here, they destroy the Watchdogs, sure. They kill one Mason and then they leave and they don't really accomplish too much at the end of the day. And I think maybe Taco Cake kind of sensed that like he he's he's running out of time to use those Nathra cores for for good measure, um, and if he wants to actuate them in the future, he'll need to get to tier two and turn them into calculisks, which are very very efficient, uh, particularly against like stacks of ground units like this. But obviously, they're they're better even than uh, than that when they're fighting air stacks. But you know their their attack will go through the Anseal hit, um, I think. Anyway, it'll definitely drain their energy very fast. Uh, and it'll be particularly good versus the Phalanxes in, in uh, Siege Mode because, again, they have no armor. And that's something that the Calculus will eat up. Hydra's being made. Not a bad idea. Going for the Ski Backed. It feels like Taco is kind of all in economically from that early damage. He never really recovered. Um, and he doesn't really have the gas bank anymore because of the Nathacore investment. I think if he didn't make those 16 Naths, right? Eight, eight pairs of Naths. Eight times 50. You know? Uh, like... 400 gas would have gone a long way towards helping him out towards uh, the the tier two, right? And even though he pops the Anseal, the Phalanxes are just too damn high, and the Madcaps are starting to storm the gates as well. He's only got a couple of them over here, but that's more than enough. The Circuit's falling on the low ground. He only has Zeths left. Not a bad idea with the Phalanxes to deal some splash damage. Their splash radius is actually higher in uh, Cosmonarchy than it is conventionally in StarCraft 1, so... Just to give you an idea of how much damage you can actually take. And hey, the circuit's over here doing pretty well to clean up some of the bio. Uh, but again, oh, he's making some Skither cores. Okay. You know, as a panic buy, I don't hate it. I think that the um, there's too many Mavericks here for them to make too much of a difference. I would even maybe say, as, as desperate as things are, if you just go for the uh, Droleths. Ooh, that's a big hit. Well, he's going to come in and try to pick pierce down the Phalanxes, right? But uh, you can see that uh, they have to get through the first one, and then they'll do a little bit better damage versus the second. Only having six of them, not the most amount of damage that you're gonna get. A lot of minerals could have maybe added some more hatches uh, earlier before this attack, but it's a little bit too late now. I think the writing is on the wall. And with the Anseals to spot as well. Yeah, these circuits are not long for this world. He's getting some, some more flyers. He's only picked off two Phalanxes for now, and, and hey, that's still good, but there's a third base up and running. You look it back over at Top Ramen's base, and I think he feels like he's won, too. Uh, he did, he's probably wondering what hidden base logistics are in the way here. 
layers of Kagrins being put down, but uh, I don't think it's going to matter. The bio can storm the gates now that the circuits have regressed into Kagrins. Here comes the last ditch effort. We've got six circuits, a couple of Nather cores, and I think, well, you know, if he pops all of the anti-air, he could be in for a good good uh, situation. But the Zets, as good as an idea they were for the sake of the phalanxes and the splash damage, clearly are not enough. Only three skits left, and GG will have to be called in just a moment here. He's got a couple more coming, a couple more hatching, but he just can't make it happen, man. Every time he, he stabs in, he loses one very, very quickly before he can kill anything else. Last couple will fall. I like the guy. I like the, the the idea. He had the shroud as well. If he had gone for a lake is or something, maybe then he could have done something. But Top Ramen takes the lead in the series yet again. So it will be down to whether or not I was uh, bamboozled by what they had said, and there is actually another game. Or like basically, if Top Ramen wins the next game, I don't know if they're even gonna be playing another one later, and and that's what's going on. But let's pop on over to see what happens in game number four. Sometimes I sit in the menu and wait for the Zerg theme to start playing, and it just gets my blood pumping. Top Robin on the top left, Taco Cake in the bottom right. We're on Germination for game four of this show match best of five. Will we see the full show? Will Taco Cake strike back? Or is Top Robin just going to be waltzing on in here like, yeah, I guess I'm just better than this guy. Whatever, man. Of course, uh, different races, you know, different strokes for different folks. But uh, I got to say, I'm really grateful. That Top Ramen is here. We got Grunch, Urbmon's brother, playing Terran as well. Man, imagine what happens if, uh, you know, for example, Top Ramen and the Beaver didn't make it through, or, you know, somebody like Grunch and Moonhunter also couldn't clutch it in and uh, make it into battlements. We would only have Newt as the only Terran. That would be horrible. Top Ramen has to make it. And maybe the Beaver too. At least one of them. Come on, man. Come on, men. Don't come on, men. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Whatever. As if they consent. Taco Cake going for the ramp hatch. I expect that uh, we're going to be seeing kind of a similar story. Uh, Top Ramen got a very, very nice lead in game number one, but wasn't able to close it. It felt like going for the Palladium, um, not necessarily an objective mistake. He will be going for the Quarry after Stockade this time around. And it's not, not horrible. It's not like a, a terrible idea, but... The drop defense came at like the, the or sorry, the drop defense. The drop defense was there actually, but it was Nathrocores. He wasn't expecting the flying unit to be able to fight back at him. And that's exactly what happened. Top Robin showing nice ability to uh, to not panic and, and bounce back. He was still ahead in workers even after all the raid, despite it getting massive damage, just to show you how far he was ahead. And that's the kind of thing that Taco Kick needed in order to get back into the game. And then conversely, Taco Cake doubled down on the air unit investment. I feel like he did a great job of getting back into the game, uh, but it wasn't quite enough. And yeah, he's he's really he's keeping tabs on this Mason. You know, back when Mystery Meat played Terran and just played in general. Oh my God, he's doing it again. The anchor, the madman. He's starting it right in his face already. Only 40 health left. I guess he wants to try to see if he can do the same thing, or maybe he's just you know pranking. He wants to force a. Uh, Heavy response, but no uh, Kagrant coming down yet. He did kill the Worker Scout, and that's about it. You know, you can cancel this, and you won't lose too much. Ooh, ooh, the decollision! He's got him! Ah, oh, never mind. He didn't have him. Didn't have him. I thought for sure he'd have him. That might be the thumbnail. Oh, got it! Yeah, the Mavericks have to turn around. Obviously, this should get canceled. He's reminding him. Well, hey, Top Ramen's fine to, to waste your Worker. There we go. I think maybe that was just an idol on a rally point or something, so <laughs> I don't think uh, Taco Ta Ta Cake had tried to kill him there. Second stockade coming. Try to use the cliff here to some kind of advantage. As the Mavericks begin to storm in. So to do the Quasilisks. Can we get uh, David Attenborough text-to-speech donation messages to read out Quasilisks and other such silly things? Anchor starting, but it's only halfway done. Quasis could storm up. And I think they will. Charging on forward, but here comes the stim pack, baby. And I feel like the focus fire has definitely been here a little bit better for the Terran player, so he will be able to... Oh, no, he changed targets. He could have killed that one and then gotten into the anchor, probably. But here's an Achmed. What's up, dude? <laughs> oh, my God, the love tap at the end. He'll lose one worker here, but... Oh, no, he won't. Holy shit. Dude, I'm... I'm... So, 
Well, I'm learning things in this cast over, man. The stim was a little bit uh, delayed there for uh, Top Ramen. He probably would have had a little bit better of a shot there. But Taco Cake also could have focus fired a little bit better. I'm such a macro demon, or uh, sorry, micro demon. I wish I was a macro demon. I'd probably win a lot more games. But I I'm a micro demon, so like, Nude is a pretty good player, right? And he was like not believing me that I uh, was clicking on like all these units to get the right HP and just snipe the right units and stuff. I was making like hot drop bio work against his uh, his mech openers. And stuff like that is, uh, you know, I take a little bit of pride when my opponent thinks that I've programmed in dev hacks. <laughs> Not that he really believed that, but still. <laughs> Ministry instead of a treasury, so Top Ramen going for a little bit more of a conservative opener here. He knows that his opponent is on the hunt. And honestly, I think this anchor is going to get busted. There are so many Quasilisks here. But he, he respects it. I think he respects it a little bit too much. I honestly think he could have just busted that. He had, what, 14 Quasis? No, maybe more. He lost, what, three on the... On, yeah, he had 16. He's going to wait for the Avaleths. He can double up here and just Giga drop into the main. And if uh, the anchor gets unloaded, you, this is the punish. This is what Zerg should be doing when you open up with the stockade, you know, Cory, uh, and then second stockade. And you delay any ability or any opportunity here. Okay, going for some Zeths. Not a bad shout, I suppose. Yeah, he scooped them up. He has scooped them up. Ooh. When does he see him? Oh, I like this from uh, Taco Cake. This is some good play. He's going to hug the left side, and I'm sure it will be seen, but does it even matter? I mean, you're talking about 12 quasis suddenly in your base. He's going to start to see what he can do. He's transferring a couple of the workers, but is SimCity betraying him here? Immediately, all the workers fall away, but this this army can just kill this. Like, you don't even need to worry that much about it, and he's, he's still got a little bit of a backstab force to heckle the uh, workers down here, so that's going to be a problem. The Ovalets getting out of the way to allow graceful targeting. Taco Keka, an honorable Zerg. The drill is trying to come out here. They do get rid of that small force, but at what cost in terms of mining time? A little bit of uh, going awry here for uh, for Taco Cake's invasion force, uh, but still standing tall with the worker, uh, sorry, the Quasilisk advantage. Anchor was lifted, so it wasn't even able to contribute to the fight with four Mavericks in there. And, all yeah, right, well. Again, Top Robin's still ahead in terms of workers. That attack could have been a lot worse. But the Zeth Swarm over here... I don't know. Yeah, he, he wants to just force a... a you, you attack the Ministry here, in my opinion. You can go after the workers, though. That's fine. He does force the pull. But now you attack the Ministry. Yep, great play coming out here. The, the cliff advantage, not enough to get more than a single Zeth. And he is going to have to lift that. So, you know, putting a little bit of damage onto it. That's pretty much it. Now you can just leave. I mean, you could maybe throw a couple of units up there to, to stun the Vulture and then go for it if you're feeling really tactical. It absolutely could happen. But uh, right now, yeah, totally fine. Swarming up with a lot more Quasis behind this. Ski backed coming, so all of the gas that he's been saving invested into probably Bactalisks coming, judging by the Hydra count. Getting another hatch as well. No third base on the way. This Vulture uh, trying to uh, outrun all the Zeths. You know, it, it occurs to me that Zerg units, uh, yeah, well, any unit in the game, right? They never get tired. We don't have, like, a stamina bar for them or anything, you know? They never, uh... I guess the the, the fatigue... Actually, the Maverick stim pack is kind of like a stamina bar. Well, uh, we're looking okay for, honestly, both of our players. But, again, the military advantage over to Taco Cake. I feel like um, the, the correct choice, or a correct choice here... Because you can go for what uh, Taco Cake is going for. He's just very aggressive, man. Uh, but if, if you go for something like, you know, you take your third and fourth bases off the back of that, and you just try to contain your opponent, that's absolutely something that you can do. You force him to work for every little bit. Now, there's a Phalanx. Uh, Bactalisks are uniquely good against Phalanxes if they are deployed. If the Phalanx is in tank mode, good luck, man. But that's where the Hydras can come in. This version of the game does have Hydras with only two armor pin. So Phalanxes are a bit better at uh, dealing with them when they're in tank mode. If you think about it, you're reducing the damage from uh, 10 to 8 instead of 10 to 9. Back to on the way. And, you know, I know that sounds silly, but uh, the cleric can heal a lot better uh, than you might expect. So that definitely helps out. Second quarry coming. Mason going over. Is Top Ramen going to take a hidden base? No, he's just putting a watchdog down. I was going to say, what's going on there? Makes sense. He wants to fly down and see what his opponent is up to, get a good scout off. Does require a little bit of uh, extra micro to set up, but that's all right. Repairing his flaming anchor. The fire is just cosmetic, guys. It doesn't actually do damage. 
Unless it's Achmeds. And there are some Achmeds over here. All of his units on hold position, trying to hold fast. But now with the front line melted, it's all the Bactalisks. Can they deal with this? The double Phalanx here on the high ground, definitely going to help out. But the Bactalisks are getting some pretty good bounces off here. That is going to be a pretty huge scalp to take, that first Phalanx. Already evacuating most of the workers because of the drop with the Quasis at the perfect time before the Watchdogs can get finished. Some of these Watchdogs at 1% left in the build time. And he even had another drop over here. It did uh, only get one Quasi out. But, you know, he's going to slowly work on that Watchdog. So just kind of stab on in here. But the Phalanx, not in the right position. Going to lift the anchor to try to get it closer on. I do think if this anchor was down here, it would have been a little bit different. Not able to do the... the Classic move, the Lundy A strat, maybe the It Depends strat of trying to blow up the add-ons. Ooh, the second stun. Oh my god. Well, it's mostly on the workers, so that's not really the end of the world. But uh, yeah, I think at this point with the reinforcements coming in, this one quasi murdering, viciously attacking a single watchdog after killing the other one. Phalanx is out, but can you possibly hold? No. GG is called the re-attack. Top Robin hands the well played to him. And that means we are going to need a game five. Well, it, lads, all we would need at this point, let's be honest, is for game five to be an hour long banger. Or maybe it'll be a five minute uh, piddling. We'll find out. But uh, hey, hats off to Taco Cake and to Top Ramen, of course, uh, for taking us to a five game set. I do like the variety of TVZ that we're seeing. And this could actually be a, a, a throne room preview match. I mean, I would say Top Ramen and Taco Cake are going to have to play uh, to their highest level uh, in the in the gauntlet. Uh, assuming they qualify through the gauntlet, then they can talk about going to battlements. And then if they get, do well in battlements, you know, he's the first and second places go straight to the, uh, I guess you could call it the round of eight, right? The throne room stage. And uh, it's a double elimination playoffs bracket. So... I, I sense some more games and maybe even some more best of fives in these players' future, but we'll see. We shall see. Thanks for joining us for this particular set, GG. And uh, let's find out what happens in game number five whenever I get that game. Wink.